Oh my goodness. That was Hawaiian. Yeah. Guess we'll stick with this song for now. <laughs> Day 28. The Artist Muse, Part 2. And uh, welcome to the show. And I have a few fun things to do when I was talking to you yesterday and I'm just gonna knock this down yesterday when I talked to you about the artist muse the idea is it originated from the Greek and so the artist muse is usually a woman and I thought I'd back up a bit day two and talk a little bit about the meaning that is pop up this and so the meaning is, let's see now, the artist muse and what it means. A muse is someone who provides a source of inspiration for an artist or creative person. Instilling a renewed sense of passion in the artist to create better works the muse is often a female, however many men have also provided artistic ex inspiration. Astonishing muse, muses deserve a place in the world. Today it means a muse is a person who serves as an inspiration. And here's a quote that I really liked. Without a muse, an artist is a madman shouting at the stars. What happens when we're not inspired or we cannot find the inspiration? It kind of gets, gets like um, thick fog in there or like still waters that just settle and there's no replenishing water coming in and out of there. So what you get is stagnation. So a muse, is a, a muse provides a source of inspiration for an artist. Oh yes, hey there, welcome aboard, enjoy your listening, comment down in the field below, I'd love to hear from you. Where are you from? People are viewing at the moment. Okay, back to the muse. Finding inspiration, we can find inspiration in, very, in a lot of things that I think that because we look for inspiration, we can look for it in gardening and when we see someone, for, gardening is coming up pretty quick so that's why I'm mentioning it. When I talk to a friend or I see what they're doing with their herb garden this year or I see some, some a picture on Facebook or social media with a herb garden or how uh, meals are prepared organic is a top word I'm just inspired by food and the taste and the freshness and looking at macrame I know not a lot of us are macrame people but I need some hangers for some plants upstairs so I went looking because I remember doing this when I was 10 years old. There were I made so many plant hangers, it was unreal. And I've forgotten it's been that long, you know, 10 years old. And when I started to look for the various knots and reintroduce myself to I become really inspired again. Inspiration is like a shock wave. When when we inspire our, ourselves, it is contagious. It's look, then see, then do. Although those of us that are persistent, some of us drop off with disinterest because it doesn't work out. Some of us in the middle will keep trying and get the result that we want and then leave. And then there are some of us that will continue to persist. 
And when we are in that category, what happens is we're pushing our growth. We're pushing and expanding the way we see the world through our eyes, through our senses, through our intuition. We're bringing that feeling and thinking down, channeling it here into emotion, into heartfelt art. And just knowing and studying how light sits and how it, how the shadows go on it for me as an artist is fun. I find it really inspiring. Shapes, just, just using shapes in a different way, going nowhere because most of the time when I do something, it's in realism. And realism has some foundation and some rules you can't break those unless you totally understand. I'm not much for abstraction, but I, I borderline on it. And I heard one artist say to me, you know, you really need to, to go back. Peop, uh, students need to understand what abstraction is first and then break the rules later. And I love that. So it's a play between that realism and abstraction for me, but it is the bright colors. When I wear bright colors, if you're feeling down today, well, okay, I love purple. But when I'm feeling really heavy, orange. I slap on orange, I put on yellow, red, and I stick out. <laughs> but I also feel the colors and the movement. As a person who does pottery, when you're creating a bowl or you're creating a, um, um, a cup or even a plaque. I did pottery for a while and I taught it. And doing the textures like the Zentangle, like the lines and the zigzags and using the various tools and that, I was in. That was so much fun. The glazing, there is different aspects of glazing. So today, I wanted to um, pop over to the Muse that I found. And I'm using the Artist Muse by Betsy Dillard Stroud. I'm using her for inspiration. And then what I do is I pull those cards. And this morning I thought about it. I looked at it real quick. And so I drew a circle. And what it said, uh, okay, I drew a circle, so maybe I, it would be better if I show you what I'm doing here, and then I can talk to you a little bit more. If you have any comments, just drop them over in the corner. Okay, iPhone. All right, so I had the color that I needed to do were double complements. Blue and orange and red and green. Okay, so I did the uh, orange and red and the green together and I used, I used a roller, a sponge roller for the background. I did the background first and the background is the first layer. Now this is a tree and I put in a sun. I still need some work on that. And I want this sun to pop. And I may have to go over it again, but it's white gold, okay? And you could see that I've actually used the yellow for highlights because I was going, the white will take it away from it. And the next thing I needed to do for the door, the door of opportunity was add a tree or a number. I don't want numbers all over here. I actually wanted to create. So this tree was created by this cutout. I used recycled my paper. What I did is I folded it in half and then I drew my lines, okay? And I'll tell you what inspired this. I'm not done this one. No, I'm going to flip it over so you can see it. But this is the one that I'm still working on. And you can see that I like my blues. Light blues and white. Moon in the back. Um, I got um, confused with the the shading 
I'm still working on it. Actually, this is a great time if you have unfinished canvases to finish them. So this one is sitting up for me to finish. So I decided I wanted to do a sunshine one. And the light that hits from the sun is filtering here. I still need to do some shading. So I added the tree. On this side, you see the sun, and it's a big tree. On this side, there's absolutely, this side here, absolutely, there's hardly any sunshine, but it's going to get a little bit dark. So I need to, um, values need to go from very light to mediocre, maybe a light green in here. So therefore, I'll get this color. The doorway of opportunity was combos. So the combo meant that the combo of between transparency and opaque. This is opaque. Have you ever heard the term opaque? What that means is it's a solid color and translucent is or transparent is thin down. So this uh, yellow is also translucent which means you can see through it but when you water it down it becomes transparent even like like a ghostly figure right and so I took the opportunity to pick up some blue and then drag it down in through the branches and um, I'm gonna work on that um, it probably take me oh I don't know depends on what mood and what music I'm listening to what this tree reminded me of okay I'm coming back up what the tree reminded me of was the season of growth I feel we are all in the season of growth and there were some things that we planted of course spring is coming and um, whatever we planted in, in thought has grown. And some of us have been planting for a while. And the tree almost reminded me of that story. Have you ever heard of the story of the two wolves? There was two, two sides of the wolf. There was the light side and the dark. I think that even in our growth, there's a light side and a dark and both don't get me wrong both are stretching our growth and what I mean by that there's no there's no bad experience there's horrible experiences yes but when I reflect on those experiences I have grown extraordinarily huge and it's just like fertilizer and the things that I've had here have traveled in here to my heart. Compassion, compassion is like fertilizer, is like the sun touching the rays of the branches and the leaves. And how poetic is that? I think about these things and um, the tree of life. This is also what I was thinking about when I did this. Did you know that the tree of life lives inside of us? For those of you who are astrological or in the healing fields, you'll know what I mean is that we have the light centers, the chakras within inside of us. We also have the DNA of our ancestors corset, corseting through our veins. And so that tree of life that I'm painting here is so ancestral. Like the first one I saw, with, you saw with the eyes, the blue one, is so ancient. And when you tap into your creativity, and like I said, creativity is in everything, all of a sudden you become aware of your origin, your roots, or maybe how grandmother used to cook her buns, or that old recipe, or that the way to stucco a ceiling, or the way, the way to sew. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson that I brought to you and inspired you in some way. Part of this 30-day creative challenge, 
as day 28. For 28 days, I've brought what I inspiring moments that I, I move and feel through my, my art studio. And when I'm reflecting, when I'm sitting there over my cup of coffee in the morning, reflection for me is actually prayer. For those of us who are spiritual, this for me is hard to not talk about because, you know, it is a it is the basis of inspiration and creativity for me is being inspired by spirituality, the spirit, the growth of the trees, the grass, the mountains, everything around. And when you feel like you're anxious or closed in, take a moment. This is supposed to be a time of peace and quiet. And enjoy your time. I love you all. We'll catch you tomorrow, day 29. Thanks for popping in.